All right. Hello, friends and family. Uh, welcome to the Influencer Show today, where I'm going to share the 15 invaluable laws of growth. Just a little lunch and learn, and I'm going to cover just a couple of the laws. So I wanted to, um, you know, it's, it's really a privilege to spend the next few minutes with you and speaking on the topic that has really changed my life which is why I'm so passionate about it. And it's about the, the topic of personal growth. So, you know, each of you is unique. Um, wouldn't you agree with that? You know, everybody's unique. And so, um, but uh, I would say which one, which of you believe that you have reached your full potential in life or in business? I'm sure not a single one of you think that because you know that you're all, you know that there's always room to grow. You know, do you want to be a better person tomorrow than you are today? You know, growing yourself daily guarantees that you'll be able to be better than you were the day before. So now before we dive into the the personal growth and making ourselves better, you know, it's not a we don't have enough time here for us to dive deep into all the facets of personal development. You know, I've done a, a Google search just on the phrase of personal growth, and guess how many entries Google came up with for personal growth? There were over 44.5 million. So that's right, 44.5 million entries just on personal growth. So I want to be clear with you up front that from the very start will not be covering everything there is to know about personal growth in this session. So fair enough. All right. So let me just check this really quick. Hey, Jing, good to see you. Hey, Mick, good to see you. Oh. All right. Let me just advance my slide here. So with that many entries on the topic of personal growth in Google that I was talking about, I think the best way for us to, to begin is to go straight to the top of personal growth guru charts. So wouldn't you agree? So one of my mentors happens to be at the top of the list. He is written several New York bestselling books on leadership and personal growth. In fact, he has written over a hundred books and sold them more than 26 million copies. His name is Dr. John C. Maxwell. And in his book, The 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth, is one of those uh, New York best-selling sellers. As an, uh, it's an outstanding must-have resource that I recommend you add to your library and helping you to reach your full potential. So we'll spend the rest of our time together, approximately 20 minutes, exploring two of John's 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth. The two laws that we will cover are the law of pain and the law of the rubber band. So these two laws are important aspects for your personal growth because the law of pain tells us that we will all experience growing pains, life lessons requiring some form of pain management. And how we handle these painful moments affects our growth. In the law of the rubber band, in order for you to grow to your full potential, you'll have to stretch your current comfort zones. So stretching grows your athletic muscles and your personal growth muscles. So are you ready to go? All right, let's begin. All right. So the law of pain says that good management of bad experiences leads to great growth and is necessary to grow. This law is a, a tough pill to swallow because pain is sometimes you know we we naturally avoid but this law is about teaching about how to turn our you know our bad experiences into positive steps leading to um, our success all right so now we have them all So we all have them and let me guess, you know, no one, no one likes them. So let's do, uh, 
You know, who loves bad experiences? No one does. Okay. So who likes bad experiences? You know, no one loves or even likes them at all. Okay, so how about if you kind of sort of wouldn't mind a bad experience or two? So, you know, maybe a, a few of you all might raise your hands on that. So, oh. Let me just go to the next one. So let's learn it. So John quotes John uh, McDonald in his chapter in the Law of Pain, saying, "Every problem introduce uh, every problem introduces a person to himself." So let me repeat that: every problem introduces a person to themselves, him, him or herself. It means it's revealing who you really are. A lot of times, pain will do that. The bottom line with this law is that everyone has bad experiences. We can't avoid them. Some of us run from them. Some do whatever little bit that they can deal with with them. And others embrace them. No matter what, we still can't avoid them. So the last in the group those who embrace are the people the leaders who choose to learn from difficult and very challenging experiences i remember the first time i spoke in an, at an event for a colleague of mine and i had planned everything out and had rehearsed and i thought you know that was enough but once i started talking i went just blank and i felt humiliation rising within me and i wasn't quite sure what to do I could tell the people in the audience sensed my hesitation to continue. You know, it was a very painful situation to be in. My voice started to tremble, you know, and I felt as if my whole body was shaking. You know, have you ever experienced that? You know, fortunately, I remembered and switched to a story that I knew well. After I told the story, I was able to get back on track and finish the speech. From that point on, you know, if I thought I had, if I thought I had rehearsed enough, I rehearsed more. So we all have those bad experiences. And you've heard the saying that life is filled with ups and downs. The problem is most of us just want ups. We do everything in our power to avoid the bad situations, yet they will always find us. It's hard taking it one day at a time when you feel like the day is just attacking you all at once. All right, I'm just checking my slides and I'm on the right track. So, you know, Look at how many, uh, you know, did anyone really say that they love bad experiences? But if, you know, if you learn to manage your bad experiences well, then you get something good out of them. Plus you have great war stories to tell. So many people take the should have, would have, or could have path when dealing with bad experiences. So consider some of the types of pain that we face. The, let's see. I have a slide on that. You know, there's the pain of incompetence. I should have seen that coming. Or the pain of financial loss. If I could only get that back, the pain of not being number one. I would be at the top if it wasn't for, you know, whatever it is. Or the pain of change. You know, they don't know what they're doing. They should have listened to me, you know, and so on. So we know that very few people, quite honestly, can take positive experiences from bad experiences. Many people become bitter from having bad experiences over and over again. Few people become better. Most become bitter. But I want to help you find ways to become better. All right? So how can you live it? What I've just shared with you are a few examples of what John calls your pain files, the pain of incompetence, the pain of not being number one, and so on. 
but just because we have our pains in file, you know, in files like these, doesn't mean we should ignore them. We keep files so we can remember and grow from experiences such as these. So to look back on and to refer to, to learn from, we need to turn our pains into gains. We do this by choosing uh, We do this by choosing a, a positive life stance. By this, you know, I mean, we need to look for the positive lessons in every experience. There are always something positive that, that you may have not seen at the time of the experience. When you live your life with a positive life stance, you find that the good will become better and the bad will not seem, will not be as bad as it seemed at the moment. So one way is to embrace and develop our creativity. Neil Donald Walsh says, life begins at the end of your comfort zone. Use the gift of a bad experience to open your mind and challenge yourself to use your own brilliant creativity. Embrace, oh, embrace the value of your bad experiences. You have a choice. You can look at bad ex life experiences and be set back from them or learn from them. It's been said that in life there are, you know, winners and there are losers. Aside from the final score in a sporting event, I would say for leaders, there are winners and there are learners, not losers. Oops, sorry. So one of the biggest challenges, biggest pushes we get going forward from bad experiences is making good changes after learning from bad experiences. A bend in the road is not the end of the road unless you forget to make the turn. So what happens to us is rarely the end of the road. Think about all your past bad experiences. It wasn't the end and what can you learn from them? So many of us focus on our feelings about what has happened to us rather than focus on our thoughts and actions that will lead us into making better decisions. So the next time you're faced with a bad experience, Remind yourself that you are on the cusp of change. Check your emotions and use them to be catalysts for change and growth. Not, don't let those bad experiences paralyze you. All right. So, oh, with the law of change, lead it. So now let me give you just one more thing to think about related to the law of pain directly connected to leadership. In other words, how do we lead from the law of pain and how do you apply this law specifically to your life? Hey, Irini, thank you for joining us. All right. <clears throat> so let's look at that. Applying this law sp specifically to your life. There are several questions you can explore, but in the, in the limited time that we have, let me give you just a few to think about. So how do you deal with pain? Do you do anything and everything possible to avoid it at all? Or do you endure it since you know you have to get through it some way or another? Or do you work to embrace it and remain positive despite having bad experiences? We all know people that do any of these, right? So thinking about where you are on the spectrum of how you view bad experiences can guide you into taking, you know, great advantage of growing from such pain. We know that getting an understanding of what has happened and recognizing the emotions you have because of these experiences is, you know, it's the starting to, it's, it's that start to create a positive action going forward. There can be numerous pathways going forward. And so here are the few of the things that you can do. So get input from others on the bad experience. Understand your emotions and where they're coming from. Identify a specific desired change you want to have from that bad experience. You know, identify what, what path you want to learn, what goal, what lesson you learn from there. And think about what positive change you can influence either in yourself and or in others. So above all, remember that personal growth requires action. If you haven't been acting when a bad experience happens, 
then you're simply avoiding it. Personal growth requires action. It's as simple and as difficult as that. So don't let another painful experience go by without learning and growing from it. All right. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. So our next law is the law of the rubber band. So the thesis for this law is growth stops when you lose the tension between where you are and where you could be. If I were to ask, you know, do you want to grow? How would you respond? I believe everybody would be a resounding yes. You know, I want to grow. But the truth of the matter is that for most of us, we avoid any form of pressure because we, we don't want to feel uncomfortable. You see, we have been taught that comfort is a place to be desired and strive for. Can I introduce a, a new thought to you? Okay, here it goes, all right? All living things grow and that growth requires stretching. John says true life begins at the end of our comfort zone, and we, and we arrive there by stretching. Think about, think about if I could give you a rubber band, okay? And I wanted you to take a couple of minutes to write down all the ways that you could use the rubber band for, okay? Now, of all the things that you could use a rubber band for, there's all there's going to be a common concern with the rubber band. So rubber bands are only useful when they're stretched. They're pretty useless when you don't. Of all the things you could use them for, you need to stretch them. So you would not be where you are and who you are today without some form of tension or stretching taking place. Let me just check on my, oh, sorry about that. All right. Where was I? Oh, yeah. So for many, the thought is when, you know, I graduated high school or college, university, you know, I've arrived and now I can stop being stretched. I mean, after all, you know, I'm all grown up now, right? Well, I think the truth is that we should continue to grow throughout our lives. But with growth comes discomfort and initially pain. What we felt in school was the tension to do enough to get that certificate, that diploma, that degree. And it can easily be described as the tension between where you were and where you want to be. So what did you do? Did you do just enough to get by? You know, perhaps some of you are like me, you know, all I wanted to do was to get out of school because my thought was once I get out of school, I, you know, I will not have to feel all this pressure. I mean, after all, excuse me, where and when will, you know, I'll use everything I learned in school. And that was secondary school. For me, I think university was a little bit different. I wanted to excel as much as I possibly could, but I had matured a little bit at that time too. <coughs> so, <coughs> so one of my favorite quotes of all time is, God's gift to us is potential. And our gift to God is developing it. So how do we do that? You know, it's it's quite simple. By getting it's by getting out of our comfort zone, by continually stretching, not only physically but emotionally, intellectually, and even spiritually. So John gives us seven benefits to tension that I'd like to share with you. So time does not permit us to explore these benefits at length, but here's a quick overview and they're on the screen for you in the, in the slide presentation there. So few people ever want to be stretched. It is literally like saying to your employer, I know I'm overqualified, but I promise to use only half my ability. You know, most people only use a fraction of their ability and rarely, if ever, try to reach their full potential. David Godin claims that only, th think about this, 
Only 32% of the US population has ever been in a bookstore. Oh, sorry, that's amazing. So, I mean, that statistic is alarming. Why is it so alarming? Because if we're not willing to read, to learn and to grow, you know, you know what I mean? That's, that's a horrible thought. When was the last time you learned something new for the first time? I need to try to learn something new every day. So the next one is setting, settling for the status quo. So most people are satisfied to settle into the comfort zone of life, you know, falling into familiar patterns and habits they have learned from those around them. So being in the comfort zone may feel good and safe, but it will lead to mediocrity and ultimately dissatisfaction. It takes real courage to push yourself outside of your comfort zone. No one remembers average people. Number three, stretching is an inside job. The real process of growth begins with your thoughts. Those thoughts then become words and the words become action. James Allen says you cannot travel within and stand still without. So think about it. You cannot travel within and stand still without. All life except mankind grows to its full potential. It's only mankind that circumvents the process. For example, um, how tall will a tree grow? A tree doesn't decide to stop growing. It continues growing all its life. This inside job is an internal measurement that allows you to evaluate where you are against what you are capable of. I mean, this one is exactly why I don't like retirement is not a, a word in, in my vocabulary. I think um, once you, you can't retire from life, you can't retire from uh, having purpose or career, it, it need, you need to be growing the whole time. So the next one we've got here is stretching always requires change. So change is always a challenge because it propels us out of our comfort zone. Just a, you know, a couple of real truths I would like to share with you is you can't improve and avoid change at the same time. So you can't improve it and avoid change at the same time. We must stop looking over our shoulder at you know, what was and start focusing on what is. You know, I find it interesting that you usually will not find a successful person who isn't restless in some way. Uh, and to quote George Eliot, he says, it's never too late to be what you might have been. If you are still satisfied with what you did five years ago, then you are not growing. Number five, stretching sets you apart from others. So have you noticed that people seem to have become satisfied with mediocrity? This is about a personal concession to be less than your best. I find it so interesting that excellence seems to be further and further away from the accepted norms of society. Successful people put themselves apart from the crowd by going over and above what others do. As you stretch and you get better, you'll be able to affect and infect others who will follow your lead and everyone will become better as a result of it. <clears throat> Number six, stretching can become a lifestyle. When you, when you stop stretching, you stop growing and perhaps even stop in some other ways. I, for you know, one, am going to continue stretching and growing as long as I'm on this planet. There is no place for me to personally stop and rest on my laurels because all living things continually grow and it only happens by stretching. Make stretching yourself a daily routine. And number seven, stretching gives you a shot at significance. You see, if you're going to grow yourself, you must first know yourself. What is the gap between good and great? You know, it could be that our ability to close that gap is directly related to our willingness to stretch. Who, um, who are you having a positive impact on today? Who is it that you have intentionally invested in today that is making a difference in them and you? 
<clears throat> so John has said, I want to make a difference doing something that makes a difference and at a time that makes a difference and with people who want to make a difference. You know, people who are committed to stretching themselves will make a difference. So the real bottom line on the law of the rubber band is, you know, is are you always looking for a better way to do what you already do? If you are, then you need to know ahead of time that it'll stretch you out of your comfort zone and propel you into your desired future. The law of the rubber band may, may be one of my favorite laws because as I live it out, I'm never the same and I get better. So as you deal with day-to-day -day situations, whether business or personal related, you're going to have several painful experiences. How you choose to deal with those determine how you positively or negatively impact your circumstances and influence those around you. What I'm saying is when life gives you lemons, remember the tension of the rubber band and use those lemons to make lemonade. <clears throat> <clears throat> so I've briefly touched, sorry, I need some water. Ugh. So I've briefly touched on two of John's 15 invaluable laws of growth. So imagine going uh, in a, into a deeper dive into these laws in a group setting or on online mastermind. So, you know, what would happen to you if you or your organization or your family and friends took a deeper dive into these laws and applied them in your life. What would that do for your personal growth? What would that, what would, um, so what I would like to, for you to do, you know, as we close is simply, you know, think about that. Um, I hope this session has been valuable to you and I thank you for your attentiveness. Um, you know, it's been an honor to be here and to um, give a little insight into why I value personal growth. Uh, my name is Doug Holt and I'm a coach, speaker and trainer with the John Maxwell team. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Thank you much. And if you're interested in a mastermind group with the 15 laws of, of growth, please private message me. All right. Bless you all. Bye.